Outside the Wire, new Netflix action movie starring Anthony Mackie, Amson Idris and in Emily Beecham. Story takes place in the near future, 2036. Eastern Europe is in a state of civil war, as much sense as that makes. Specifically, the combat depicted takes place in Ukraine. Our freedom fighters and rebels try to defend themselves from Russian-backed military organization. The UN doesn't intervene and the USA is the only sheriff in town trying to get control of the situation on the ground. In the opening sequence, we see Harp, a young, talented, but also a very rash drone pilot, disobey direct orders and bomb a suspicious truck that is threatening, um, threatening um, a squad on the ground. As a result of his actions, two US soldiers die, but he insists he saved the other 40 from being bombed. So there's a gray area there. We don't know if he was correct or not. Instead of being court-martialed, uh, the brass sends him to the ground, um, to Ukraine, and assigns him to the mysterious Captain Leo, played by Maki, who, as it turns out, is not just mysterious because of his Black Ops-style intelligence missions, but also because he's actually a prototype android, pretending to be a human. The two of them immediately take off outside the wire, which is the safe base perimeter, and also a phrase that is uttered in the film like 15 times, into a ruined city to find and neutralize the bad guy, who is looking for nuclear launch codes for Ukraine-based warheads. The story goes from there with its twists and turns and a fair bit of action involving shooting, explosions, robots, and also hand-to-hand -hand combat. Unfortunately, while the action itself is passable, the movie as a whole is not very good. First off, it's very difficult to immerse yourself in the film when you're being told, for example, that um, the reason why an American android looks like a black dude is so that when he's sent into Ukraine, he can be the face of neutrality. That's a quote, by the way. So he's not associated with America. What's up with that? And when the Ukrainian militia itself has uh, a couple of black dudes as background extras as well. And when another prominent Ukrainian character, played by Emily Beecham, speaks in her natural, perfect British accent. In general, there's a distinct lack of attention to detail and attempts to reasonably explain what's going on. And that's just not just the small stuff, um, because on the one hand, the things that I, I mentioned, those are the details, but they do take you away from the movie. But it also extends to a grander picture. Um, without spoiling too much, the story is filled with one plot twist after another, secrets within secrets, but they don't really make sense. I mean, the entire finale is just aggressively stupid in terms of when you ask yourself what exactly is the, the, is the villain trying to achieve by his actions, what is the, the end game there, there really is no logical answer. Um, there's also a really weird structure where the film is, it's kind of trying to emulate Sicario, okay? With Harp being the fish out of water audience insert character. He's constantly behind, he doesn't know what's going on. He's he's, he's on his toes, he, he doesn't have the full picture of what's going on. Much like Emily Blunt in Sicario and uh, was and um, Anthony Mackie here is the Android version of Benicio del Toro from that film, uh, a guy whose real motivations and missions remain secret until the end. But Sicario, I think, handled that um, that structure much better. First off, in terms of logic. Secondly, in how it used those characters. You may remember at one point in the film, in that film, when we finally learn, um, along with Emily Blunt, that she's really just a tool being used by the other characters. She's she becomes sort of sidelined in the film, and Benicio takes over as the main character for the final act. In Outside the Wire, unfortunately, the script insists on keeping Harp front and center. And what happens is he's involved in the final act, despite the fact that the way the story goes, if you just stop for a second and think, he could have just stayed in the base and it would have no consequence whatsoever on what ends up happening. And when your protagonist is inconsequential to the movie's resolution, well, that to me is a problem with the story structure. On a deeper level, the movie also tries to criticize American imperialism and military industrial complex, which is fine, but it is so heavy handed, uh, so unsubtle, it almost hurts. The things that I did like was uh, Maki. I think he's got this air of cool charisma about him that was perhaps the most engaging part of the film. I, I like to see him on the screen. <clears throat> There's also a couple of meta callbacks to him taking over as the next Captain America, which are funny. And I guess I enjoyed the fact that the violence in the film wasn't really watered down. It, it was properly brutal when it needed to be, uh, even when the action itself uh, was often poorly edited and lacking tension. Overall, I don't think this is a movie that I would recommend in good conscience to pretty much anyone. 
If you want a mystery thriller about Black Ops missions done by morally ambiguous characters, just go watch Sicario instead. It's a much, much better film than Outside the Wire.